Jeff McGinnis here, uh, West Charlotte Center, 13 year NBA vet. Um, I started right here though, coaching high school, doing my thing, trying to get to the next level, coaching college and maybe the NBA, but it all started right here at West Charlotte Center. Yeah, I started, I went to North Carolina in 93 to 96. I played with Jerry Stackhouse, Rashid Wallace. Uh, we had a hell of a run there. We all still communicate, stay in touch. After that, I went to the NBA. I was drafted by the Denver Nuggets in 19, the 96 draft, second round, pick 37. And um, I grinded it out to a 13-year career. It wasn't all it wasn't all peaches and roses, but you know, I'm a survivor. I'm from right here in Bakersfield Road, so I had to fight, fight to get mine, fight to stay in, fight to get contracts, but that's it made the process sweeter, you know, at the end, end of the road. So, like I said, I'm just a grinder, man, right here. And um, this this made me be able to do that. You know, when the times got hard and coaches didn't believe in me, I knew growing up with my boys and playing on this park and playing at that center, I was built for anything. So, I mean, I just kept my faith and just kept grinding. Growing up in my childhood, I grew up on Bates Floor Road, right here, Abelwood Road. So, I mean, it was rough. Um, Playing sports though, that was my outlet. Um, basketball, football, baseball, I played all the sports. Uh, you know, you had choices to grow up here. Um, I saw a lot of stuff. I mean, you had, you had drug dealing, prostitution, you had it all growing up in Vegas for a row. You had to make choices. So you had to, are you in or you out? Which one you want to do? So I had to make the choice. I had friends doing all the stuff, but I had to make choices. I never judged them. I just made the choice to choose another route. So I chose basketball. Um, and after junior high, I went to West Mac first. My freshman year, I went to West Mac for one year. Played at West Mac as a freshman on varsity. And then my dream was to come back and play for West Charlotte. So I played for Coach McCullough, rest in peace, Coach. Um, played for Coach McCullough, to me, one of the best high school coaches around. That made me want to be a coach, playing for coaches like him. But like I said, um, did the West Charlotte thing, grinded that out. Won the championship in 10th grade in West Charlotte with Thad Bonaparte and all my dogs, um, Latrim Blanton. So, like I said, um, just growing up around here, I had choices, man. Um, you had to make choices, like West Boulevard. I mean, I had cousins over there at DeMarco, all my cousins, Sandy, all my family, you know, hood to hood. And you had to make choices in those hoods to survive. So, I always saw the stuff, but I might have dipped and dabbed too, but I wanted to be on the other side. So, I, I knew the choices for me. I wasn't no gangster, so I had to get into that basketball court and that gym and play basketball. So, for me, that was, that was it. We won the state championship at West Charlotte. So then, um, you know, like I said, the temptations of uh, being on Baylor's Foot Road and everything start eating at me. So I wanted to go to Oak Hill. Junior Burroughs had just went that route from Baylor's Foot, so I wanted to follow him. I saw he signed the University of Virginia, so I was like, man, I can, I can, I can make some of myself too. So I went to Oak Hill for my next two years. I joined with some good dudes, Stackhouse. Uh, I played with some great dudes over there. We've done some uh, historic things. I went like 74 and one in two years at Oak Hill, done some good stuff. Um, like I said, it, it kind of, it was in the, I'm going from Bettysville Road to the middle of nowhere in the mountains. So it was, it was, a, it was an adjustment, man. Like every, every chance I get, I was trying to come home, but you know, it made me a better man. You know what I'm saying? I knew sacrificing, and that's what I tell all these kids, sacrifices to get what you want sometimes. So I had to sacrifice being around my friends, being around my family to make a decision that was gonna help me better my life. To get a chance to go to Carolina, which was the next step. I went to Carolina as a freshman, uh, playing for one, to me, the greatest uh, college coach ever, Dean Smith. Um, if it wasn't for Dean Smith, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today. Um, he was like a father figure. I was a single, single parent. My mom was a single parent growing up, so Dean Smith and any coach that entered my life had to kind of be like a father figure, because I needed that. And Dean Smith took the role on and he ran with it. And that's why I'm forever indebted to that man. Um, everything I do, I owe him for my basketball career. So I just want to say rest in peace, coach. But yeah, from Carolina, NBA. Um, got drafted by the Nuggets, I think I said, second round. Um, and like I said, I just had to grind. Um, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but nothing in my life was easy. Like I've been telling this story, everything been a grind. So I just had to do what I had to do to stay. I couldn't come back to Charlotte. like. When, when it was the last cut, the final cut, me and the next man, I knew it couldn't be me. I had to outwork him, uh, beat his ass, do what I had to do. I had to stay in the league, man, I couldn't come home. So for me, I just had to grind and 
by any means necessary. I had to do what I had to do to stay in there. Um, just, I was in Denver. My first team in the NBA was the Denver Nuggets. Um, I played there for a year. I really was still immature. I really didn't really know what to expect. I, I had that still that base four mentality. I wanted to play. And I really didn't understand, you know, the coaching and the politics behind basketball at that point. So I, I learned a long lesson. Um, I got cut from Denver and I had to go overseas. I went to Greece for six months. I had to go to Greece for six months, round it out. And I just told you I'm from Vegas for a row. Now I'm in Greece. So I went from Denver to Greece. I'm really out of my element. So I just had to make that work. I had some good people in my life who kept talking to me. Um, one being Charles Barkley. I saw Charles Barkley. And Barkley was like, you too fucking good to be going through the shit you're going through. So Charles Barkley was really one of the people who made me realize I could do this. So then after that, I came back home. I played for the Clippers. I played for the Clippers for two and a half years. Um, great experience. Um, really started knowing I could play in the league then. Um, Lamar Odom, Darius Miles, Clint Richardson. We had a, the young dudes, Corey McGetty. We had that young squad, Elton Grant. I was a starting point guard, so I, then I realized I could really do this. So from the Clippers, things was up and up. Um, had a great career there. Then I signed with Portland. I went to the Trailblazers with Rashi Wallace, uh, Damon Stoudemire, Scottie Pippen. We had that mob. So that was really the team. They called us the Jailblazers. <laughs> you know, everybody was on us because we got in a lot of trouble. A lot of stuff was going on, but I, I never was getting in trouble. Though I was one of the good ones on that team. So <laughs> you know, the Jailblazers they called us, but. That was probably my funnest experience, my best team I played with, Dale Davis. We just had fun. We was all one team. So after Portland, I got traded to Cleveland to the Cavs with the Kings. So for me, I was in heaven then. I'm playing with LeBron James, one of the hottest players in the NBA, being his point guard, throwing him lobs. Um, that was my dog. Still talk a lot. Um, one of the best players in the NBA. Still one of the best. So I don't think the dude ever going to age. You know, I joke to him now, he never ages. So. You know, came to Charlotte, brought him to the club, brought him to the Vegas Ford, brought him to my mom's crib. So, you know, through the basketball, man, I, I showed Charlotte a lot of stuff. They seen a lot of stuff, brought all my dudes around, the dudes that I messed with, Lamar been down here, all the dudes I messed with been here. So that was the, uh, my Cleveland experience. And after Cleveland, I signed with New Jersey. I had a chance to play with Jason Kidd, Vince Carter, um, a lot of dudes. So if you can see in this story, man, I'm going to a lot of teams, but my, my my career was like the NCAA tournament. Survive and move on, man. You know what I'm saying? So the whole thing, you just got to keep grinding, bro. Like, you never let nobody tell you you can't grind. So I just kept grinding, kept grinding. You know, people would always ask me, how does it feel to go to another team every year? I said, they got banks in every city. So as long as they paying me, I was good. So, you know, that's that. So I played with LeBron. Then I ended my career in Charlotte. You know, that was the dream come true to be able to be a See how this thing take me around the world? God is good. You know, I ended my career in Charlotte with the Hornets. You know, I always wanted to get drafted by the Hornets and play for the Hornets, but just having faith and just never giving up. I ended my career right here in Charlotte with Michael Jordan and the Hornets. I was older, but I had two, two good years with the Hornets. Um, something I always wanted to do. So to me, I ended my career on a great note. Dreams do come true, because I played for the Charlotte Hornets. And I would always joke them dudes like, we playing in Earl Village. <laughs> Y'all put a million dollar arena in Earl Village. You know what I'm saying? So people from Charlotte know what time it is. Those jokes, you know, they might not understand it. But if you're from the root of Charlotte, you'll know what I mean. So, I mean, that's it, man. So I just been blessed to take, you know, negative and make it positive. So when I finished playing, man, I, um, I was training a lot of kids um, around the area. Then I started my own AAU team called Team Charlotte. Uh, we sponsored by Under Armour. We in the UAA circuit. Um, great thing to help kids, man. That's when I started. I just wanted to help kids in my community and give back. But, you know, I've been doing it like 14 years now. It's not took off. We one of the premier programs in the country. Um, I think everybody knows who Team Charlotte is. We got about six pros in the NBA from our program. Aaron Wiggins, Tashawn Alexander, Ray John Tucker, Devon Dotson. Uh, we got a couple guys overseas, Keyshawn Woods. So, we, you know, we've been helping guys in their life and they made it to the next level. So. We got about seven teams. We started like third, fourth grade, we're helping the kids all the way up to high school. So we do a lot of youth camps, a lot of you know book bag giveaways around school time. So you know, Team Charlotte, we started that. It's a nonprofit. Um, so from there, I did that like for 13 years. We won championships, championships. So 
I wanted to grow in coaching, so I took a job at Combine Academy three years ago um, in Lincolnton, North Carolina. A great uh, prep boarding school. I was the national coach. Uh, the first year, we had some great talent, Jalen Shafino Hood. Um, guys like that, he's a five-star player. Rob Dillingham, he's a five-star player. So we had some great talent there. The first year, we went to the championship, uh, lost in the championship uh, to Moravian Prep. And um, since then, I built that program. We was nationally ranked every year. Um, 25 games, season one, 25 games every year I was there. The last two years, we back-to-back -back Hoop State champs, won the championship back-to-back uh, -back time. So um, three years I was at the school, I was in the championship game every year, won it twice. So I think the proof is in the pudding of what I could do as a basketball coach and help these young kids in the community. But I want to get, I want to broaden that. So I've recently, you know, we par I parted ways with Combine because I want to do some different things in my life. I want to get to the next level of coaching. Um, I'm currently in school, finishing my degree right now. So um, I just want to take it to the next level and see how I could go. You know, I just always felt like it got to make sense. And for me, make sense is growing. So when I feel like I'm standing still, I got to try to grow. So that's kind of what the thing with the high school was. I just want to do more. And, um, but Combine gave me a great platform to do my thing. So I always want to be grateful to those guys. And thank you, Combine, for the platform you provided me. So, but yeah, man, I just want to grow and do other things. Yeah, my mom, Cynthia McGinnis, she, she, she's my rock. I mean, I mean, she, she, she provided for all of us. I mean, she was always there for me. I needed shoes, I needed cleats. I mean, anything I needed for sports, like I said, growing up, she, she worked two and three jobs, never really seen her because she was in grinding. So that's kind of, I think, where, where I get my grind from, I seen her do it. Um, she provided everything for us that we needed. I had three sisters, so to see one woman doing all that, it was, it was amazing to me. How could I go on a basketball court and be lazy? But you know, she was there for me, and then, like you said, I had my son, uh, Lil J came. Uh, now he's 21, so he's a big boy now. But just playing basketball, having a kid, balancing family, and all that—it was hard. I mean, I think, I think people went through a lot of mental illness back then before it became such a, a big thing. Now, a lot of guys that you you would say now, like, what happened to this player? Now we might know the mental illness was so big then, and. Maybe I was depressed before and didn't even know it, but I had a good support system. My mom, like I had Kevin Graham. If I take a picture right now, Pastor Kevin Graham from West Charlotte Center, where I grew up with, he'll be like, something wrong with your eyes, boy. So, what's up? I need to pray for you. So I, I've always had people around me who know me. So, and they're in high places who know me. So my mom, I take a picture, my mom will call and be like, something ain't right. And she'll know it. Right when I was about to have my son, she knew something wasn't right. <laughs> she knew I was something was wrong. So. People who know you know you, you know what I'm saying? So like my family always been strong. Like everybody, Quelo, uh, BD, Wayne, Dada, everybody been supportive in my in my drive. You know, Donnie, Uncle Donnie, Martin, all my family been been there. Rest in peace, Ray, you know, everybody. Your mom, everybody, all, all of our family been tight. DeMarco, Jeff, the whole family been tight. You know, I can go to them. We always beef, but in times where when it's love, it's love, you know what I'm saying? So. You know, family, all you got, man, and I always cherish mine. I, ain't, I always ain't been there for them, but sometimes you gotta get away to get you, and I can live with all the stuff that come with that. Yeah, man, just to any kids out here, man, who trying to be a hooper, whatever you wanna be, man, I always tell my kids, um, you gonna make a choice. When I talk to my team every day, you gonna do something in life. Whatever you wanna do, just be great at it, um, and, and go all out. If you heard my story, you hear what I say, I grind. It was coaches that said I couldn't play, couldn't couldn't make their teams, but that don't stop me. There's gonna be people to tell you you can't do things in your life. That shouldn't stop you, man. Let let your biggest haters be your motivation. You know, like if I if I wouldn't if I would have stopped, I had people right at West Charlotte High School tell me you wasn't you wasn't gonna be an NBA player. So if I would have listened to them, I would never been to the spot I can't went to. So just grind, man. Know in your heart who you are and what you want. But you got to be solid in here. You got to know it's the truth. Like, I knew my truth. I knew what I wanted. I knew I wanted to be an NBA player. If I don't believe in me, how somebody else going to believe in me? And that's all I'll say, man. Just go for it. Go for what you want. If you're a dancer, you're a rapper, you're a singer, whatever, just go for it. And it's just be the best at it, man. And like I said, I just want to shout out all my coaching staff, Sam Sanders, Keenan. Those boys been with me for 12, 13 years, grinding behind the scenes. They don't get enough credit. They get a lot of hate for rah rah coaches, but those dudes behind the scenes make Jeff McGinnis the coach he is. So I just want to shout my boys out, Team Charlotte, everybody who's been around. 
just keep grinding. And I want to give a major shout out to Gutter Magazine Sports for putting this down for me, man. And my cousin Sandy, realist in the business.